We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, for your blessings in our life. Amen. Amen. That you indeed have prepared a banquet for us. Amen. Amen. O Lord, prepare us that we may be prepared to attend your holy banquet, to dine with you, to rejoice with you, O Christ, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Yeah, all right, now that I know you're ready, now that I know you're here, we're going to talk about this passage, all right? You see, we have this parable here, this parable in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, this parable about a king who prepares a wedding, right? Y'all with me so far, right? No? Okay, just checking, just checking. And this parable, we have an arranged marriage. The king has arranged the marriage for his son and is preparing a banquet for this wedding feast that has already been planned. And so he summons those who are invited. Now, those who are invited had already received their invitation, right? They had already received their invitation, and many of them must have RSVP'd that they were coming, right? Otherwise, there'd be no reason for him to say, my feast is ready, come, because otherwise they'd be like, what feast are you talking about? I, come on. So they had already responded that they were going to this wedding. The king sends out his summons to let them know that the wedding feast is prepared and is ready, yet they decided that they ain't going to come. And this king begs them, trying to entice them, he says to them, my oxen and my fatted calf is ready. Yet some of them had more pressing concerns. And some of those who were invited, they simply mistreated the servants and killed the king's servants. And in the king's anger, he destroys all of those who were originally invited and burns their cities to the ground. You all don't want to mess with the king. And after destroying their cities, he issues a last-minute invitation to any and to all. He tells his servants, go out there and find anyone and everyone. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they do, if they are good or if they are bad. I don't care. I just want this place filled. And it was full. But one of those secondary invitees, was inappropriately dressed. And for his insult, he was bound hand and foot and thrown into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so if I were to title today's message to you, I would say, if you agree to come to the wedding, Come and come correct. If you agree to come to the wedding, come and come correct. You see, beloved, when we talk about this, we must know what this passage, what this parable is really about. And by now we should know this passage is really about who enters the kingdom of God and how they will enter into, the God, into God's kingdom, right? And it's interesting that I'm preaching this as I prepare myself to go to a wedding. Next week, Sunday, I'll be in North Carolina for one of my clergy brother's wedding, a, a fellow Episcopal priest, another fan of Ethiopia, just like I am. A priest who was one of the groomsmen in my wedding. A priest who is the godfather to my baby girl. So y'all know I definitely want to be at this wedding. Yet, Lord knows it has been difficult to prepare. And if he watches this sermon, because I record my sermons, if he watches this sermon, he'll hear my confessional. It has been difficult to prepare. Having a new baby will do that to you, you know? Yeah. And all the familial relations and involvements that get intertwined and get out of whack as you try to get used to this new rhythm of life. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You had a, if you had a child. And 
all the business concerns, y'all know I'm a free range kind of priest, I kind of go all over the place, so you got these business concerns, uh, opportunities as well as challenges that kind of got you focused all over the place, and then, as if that wasn't enough, if you don't know, because the news ain't been telling you, in the last, in the month of September, the islands of the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, and other islands as well, but I'm from the Virgin Islands, were hit by two, not one, but two Category 5 hurricanes. One that was the biggest ever recorded in the Atlantic, Irma, and the other that was like the fifth biggest. In two weeks, I spent three days, twice, wondering if my parents were alive. So certainly, my, my, my focus was elsewhere. I wasn't focused on this wedding. I wasn't focused on the preparations. My emotions are running all over the place. I was not focused on this wedding, nor making the preparations. It wasn't until this week that I finally bought my ticket and got my rental car. And then it wasn't until a couple of hours after getting my ticket and my rental car that I even remembered that I needed a hotel room. All of these things have combined to put me behind the eight ball, so to speak, in terms of preparing to attend this wedding. But none of those preparations, none of those obstacles, none of those challenges have dampened my desire to be at this wedding. I still want to be there. So when my brother calls me up and he's like, hey, man, what happened to your travel range with your hotel room? I'm like, oh, my Lord and I quickly get in gear. I mean, this is what we do for a wedding, right? We get in gear, right? No matter how long it takes for us to prepare, we, we prepare, right? We know that we gotta get ready for this wedding and we gotta come. If they say it's a daytime wedding, we gotta be there at day, not at night. We know that if it's a black tie wedding, you got to come in black tie. You don't come in your, your gym shorts. But that's not what happens at this wedding that we're talking about today, right? For this wedding, those who had already accepted the Lord's invitation determined that they weren't going to come. And then from those who were invited at the last minute comes another one who determines that he was going to ignore the king's instructions on how he should attend the wedding. And so what we have is one group who is unwilling to come or too busy to come, and one from another group who is unwilling to come correct, thinking that he could come as he were. You know, they always tell you that, right? They say, come as you are, brother. Come as you are, sister. Thinking that he could come as he was. Thinking that the master's wedding instructions were optional. You know, there are some occasions you go to a black tie, it says black tie optional. They think that the dress code is optional, that you can just show up any kind of way. And when we take a closer look at this passage, beloved, we realize a few things. We should know by now that the arranged marriage of this son, the king, is God the Father, right? You know that, right? We're aware of that. And that this marriage indeed has been arranged. This marriage was arranged through the incarnation of the only begotten son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? That his coming in the first time was the engagement party, the betrothal, as they would say knowing that the second coming would be the, the wedding itself, right? That heavenly banquet that all of these people are attending is our eschatological hope, our hope for the end times. That's what we want. That's where we want to be, right? We want to be at that heavenly banquet, like it says in Revelations 19 and 9, and then he said to me, write this, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. that marriage supper where we will be married to our heavenly bridegroom at the parousia, at the second coming. 
with the Eucharist every Sunday and every time we lift the liturgy as our reminder, as a remembrance of him as our holy bridegroom. We want to go to that great wedding feast, right? Some of y'all know. Some of y'all don't want to go. <laughs> we want to go to that great heavenly feast, amen? amen? Oh, thanks be to God. I know I'm in the right place now. Okay, just check it, just check it, just check it. <laughs> and so the summons of those invited note well that he did not send to extend an invitation. This wasn't like the first time that they had heard of the wedding banquet. Rather, he sent simply to call those who had already accepted his invitation and let them know that the feast that they supposedly had been waiting for was ready. He sent word to let them know that it was time for them to come to the wedding that they had already said they intended on attending. So who are these who had been invited? For you biblical literalists, we know, and historically we know it's true, uh, that we're talking about the Jews, right? They are the ones who were already invited, right? Yeah, y'all with me, right? But we ain't just talking about the Jews. Y'all do know that too, right? Those who were already invited are those who've been Christian from before they knew any better. Those who were baptized from birth or from before the quote-unquote age of reason, whatever that is. So. It is those who come from a Christian household who, no matter how far they may stray, everybody knows that one day he or she will become a Christian because that's what we do in our family. But they wouldn't come. Their worldly cares encumbered them, weighted them down. Y'all heard it. Y'all said it. You know, I got business to attend to. I got this money to make. I got career goals and career ambitions and worldly things to accomplish. Lord, now is not the right time for me to be coming to your banquet. I still got things to do. I still got this life to live. I ain't ready to get right. I want to get a little right. I'll come to church on Sunday, get a little right, and then I want to go back in this debauchery. The king of glory summons us all to his son's wedding, but to be invited is not enough. Just because you have an invitation does not mean that all is well. We must still come when the king summons us. We must come when he is ready for us to come, not when we ourselves get good and ready to show up. Rather, we must be ready at all times. For as they say, no one knows the hour nor the day when the summons man comes. And so we must be ready at all times because there will indeed be a banquet. Whether you come or not, there will indeed be a banquet. It does not matter if you have an invitation. If you are not ready when the Lord summons you to come, your invitation will be rescinded and given to someone else. And that's why this other man is so interesting to me. This man with no wedding garment, this man who is representative of all who are newly converted, of those who did not grow up in a Christian household, who did not grow up as Christians. This man who represents those who are truly the newly baptized. We got one today. Matthew 22, verses 11 through 14. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. 
Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Beloved, there is indeed a correct way for you and I to come to the kingdom of God and to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I know. Some might not like to hear that. I used to get told all the time in seminary, and I get told in clerical circles all the time, you don't want to use such definitive language. You don't want to tell people what they should do. You know, we Americans, we like wiggle room. <laughs> but how you come to the Lord's banquet matters. I mean, think of it this way. Why would Jesus, because this is Jesus speaking, right? This, is the, this parable comes from the Lord himself, out of his mouth we say. Why would Jesus input such a detail in the gospel if it didn't matter? Why would he talk about the one who did not wear the wedding garment and was thrown out of the place where, and thrown into a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth? Why would the Lord waste breath saying that if it's not important? So now think about it. How did everyone get a wedding garment? You ever thought about that? How did they know how they were supposed to come to this wedding? They got a last minute invitation. I'm sure the Lord didn't print up new invites with details on how you're supposed to dress and all that attire at the last minute. I, you know, I don't know, maybe he had a whole bunch of leftover invites that he didn't send out. I, I don't know, but it would seem to me that they just went out into the streets like they were told, and they told people there's a wedding going on, you come. How in the world did they know how they were supposed to dress? They didn't know. They were indeed invited as they were. They were indeed told to come as you are. However, those wedding garments came from the king's wardrobe. Come as you are, and when you get to the door, my servants will tell you what to do. And they will hand out a wedding garment to you as you enter. You put that on, and you feast. And this further highlights the utter absurdity of this man. I mean, here it is. You weren't doing anything all day. You sitting on the street just hanging out, looking for a meal possibly, and somebody comes and tells you there's a banquet where there is oxen and fatted calf and everyone will be making merry and all you have to do is come. And you come and the man gives you from his own wardrobe something to put on. And you say, eh. He was pleased to come to the Lord's banquet but he wanted to be there on his own terms, not on the king's terms. He wanted things his way, but he still expected to remain at the king's banquet. And so his silence at being questioned highlights for us his stubbornness. And that's why I say, if you agree to come to the wedding, come and come correct. You see, some of us are like those who were invited beforehand. We know that we're children of the promise. We, we know that we have been signed, sealed, delivered. We're his. We know that we are saved. We proclaim it proudly. And so we expect prosperity. We expect blessedness. And in chasing that prosperity, in chasing that very American dream, we become burdened by the responsibilities of this world. And so despite that sure invitation, we end up being too busy to come when we are summoned to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Many of us, however, are like this man with no wedding garment. We enter through the baptismal gate, we get baptized, and we are given our wedding garment, but we refuse to put it on. 
we are told how to walk worthy of the calling to which we have been called, but we say, eh, Jesus died for me, so I ain't got to do none of that. We come to the Eucharistic feast, but we want to wear whatever we want to wear. We don't want to cloak ourselves in repentance and forgiveness. We just figure God is good all the time. And so even in my badliness, God is always going to be good. And so I can just come up to the holy table with my dirty hands. I'm not going to clean up. I ain't going to wash my hands, Lord. I'm going to just come up to the table any old way, and you got to feed me because you are God. And you ain't got no choice but be good to me. (laughs) We want the faith to conform to us. We don't believe that we should conform to the faith. We don't want to bring ourselves into alignment with the mandates of the king. And so when the messengers who are sent by God summon us and his his servants pass out those spiritual garments to us, we reject them. Or we ignore that clothing because we think that somehow the king won't notice that we're in here in wrong attire. If I hide among all the other people who are properly attired, the king won't notice. Or worse, we could care less. And we think we can show up to the wedding any sort of way. If you agree to come to the wedding, come and come correct. It is not for you to determine when the wedding feast is ready. It is not for you to determine what the menu is or when you should show up. It is not for you to determine how you should walk through the door. If they tell you to walk through the door backwards on your hands, you walk through the door backwards on your hands. It is for you to be faithful and to partake of the holy sacraments, the mystical things of this great heavenly banquet, according to the king's terms, and not on your own. Do you wish, beloved, do you wish to be present and to enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb? If so, then take heed. As one who has been baptized, as one who will be baptized, you have already been invited, but you must come when he summons you. And when you come, you must enter in the right way. Amen.